shows or anything that you wish uh, to just uh, cue in mm -hmm. and play right now to see that it all plays okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you, Excellent. our team can assist you. So join you. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I think now you. Now I'm, you know, so showing the movie. Okay. Can you see? Uh, no, sir. I can't. Yeah, I can. I can. I can yes, see. Yes. I can. Yes. yes. You can see? Yes. Yes. Okay. We can. okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And no, Hello. no, no important audio Hello. information. I I think Satoko has also joined. Hello. Yes. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to come and give us a talk on such an interesting topic. Our pleasure. Yeah, so as uh, people, we, I was just telling uh, Tom, sir, that uh, if you could, uh, uh, if you have any videos or anything that you wish us to play during this talk, and if you could just rehearse it quickly right now so that uh, during your talk, we don't have any interruptions. Okay, I just uh, prepared my own presentation document. And no, okay. no movie? Do you have a movie? Um, well, I pasted YouTube link, so I, I hope it works. Yes, we can actually uh, practice that. If you could just yeah, yeah, uh, try. show us yeah. the link so, and play and see if it's um, yeah, plays. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm seeing my husband lying. Line? Line? Yes, here. And just uh, on the computer screen, I can see your private line screen for now. Yeah, but uh, oh. you, you are you, you can... sharing something? No. Oh, oh, okay, maybe. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Is it okay for me to share my own presentation file? For yes. Now? Can you make her the presenter, please? Okay. Yes, Professor, you are allowed to present. Please go ahead. Can you go in, Sensei? Actually, how do I pick up my document? You can use the button. Yes, yes. You can use the screen. Yes, yes. You can use the screen. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Window here. How yeah. about this? Everybody yes. can see the yes. slide. You can we see, can but uh, but see it's a. Uh, あの、<笑> あの。なんかさっきのやつをやっといて。ちょ、今ラインで送ったんだけど、そのど真ん中にあるボタンを押せないかな。出しといたと。あ、これ、あ。これがね、私のところから出て見えないんだよね、何も。
あの要するに何が見えてるかっていうと、うん、生,生の画面が見えてるので、うん、ああプレゼンテーションの画面になっていないこうなってるわけ LINE に送ったけどそうなってますうんで,で右上にプレゼントってあるのはそれが出てこないんだよ。Okay, okay.、Yeah. So, what we will do right now,、um, we will just play a quick introduction of IHFC. The,、mm -hmm. We are the TIH of、uh, IIT Delhi, as Professor Saha must have told you about us. We specialize in the area of robotics and cobotics, which、mm -hmm. is very relevant to the talk that we are having today because. Uh, as seeing your pictures and your history, and also how your, sir, your uh, uh, you know, participation in the world of、uh, robotic care, which is very important because that is where cobotics is a very important part of you know, medical care, is very important, and how robotic medical care is going to be a huge role in the future. Uh, is what、uh, we are looking at as well. So, even in India, we are looking at it greatly. So,、um, I just want a quick introduction. I want to do a two minute introduction of IHFC to all the guests. And then、sure. I'll hand over the floor to ma'am and you to do your presentation. Is that okay? Yes. Sure. Okay. Please do. I, Thanks. I, I, am, I am Pia Basu. I head marketing for IHFC. For everyone, and I take care of Cobo Talks and Cobo News and all the marketing activities of IHFC. So, today we are very privileged to have here with us、uh, both of you, and thank you, sir and ma'am.、Uh, and could we have、uh, Udayan and team, could we please have the IHFC video to be played right now for sir and everyone to have a look? Ashish, 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 there's no audio. Ashish, there's no audio. Significant in our life. We... Okay, now there is. Now there is. See, everything is going to change. You know, whatever you look around yourself, I think everything will change. All these technologies, they are going to be very, very significant in our life. We envision that we are going to use robotics and humans and the human robotic interface for improvement of society. That our focus should be human robot interaction. Human robot interaction means that human intelligence with the robot decision. We are called cobotics. Cobotics means collaborative robotics, where human beings and robots work together. We work on technologies of the future. We look at ways in which these technologies will actually get deployed. We provide leadership in this. We work with industry. So, we have chosen four major thrust areas, you may call it. One is called the medical robotics. The second is the defense robotics, third is the agriculture robotics, and fourth is the industry 4.0 or industry 5.0. We are trying to build、uh, an ecosystem here. You know, when we talk about ecosystem, it starts from、uh, the kind of research capabilities that we are able to build. How is that we are able to instill the、uh, you know, sense of commercialization in all those activities? We should talk about you know, how is that research getting translated into products. So, I think we want to be that ecosystem, we want to be that enabler which is making that possible. 
we've also got a large number of research projects and technology de development we are also creating some common infrastructure for instance in the area of medical simulation in the area of drones which can be used by a whole group so that we are trying to create an innovation ecosystem in the field of robotics some of the research for example prosthetic hand done by tejpur university the professor tells us that it is undergoing a field trials with the doctor so that's a kind of a positive that it is reaching towards the market coming to the startup funding uh, we are very happy that uh, one of the startup companies from it delhi bot lab dynamics whom we funded last year they could show 1000 drone swarming on 29th of january last year which made the country fourth in the world so that's a pride on us because we have been contributing to that part what an industry can offer an academy can't what an academy can offer industry can't if we all come together that's that's the real value proposition for a startup i think that, that is what we are trying to build through a collaboration mission of iitfc and the mission of iit delhi there's a lot of synergy and so we are treating iitfc as an extension of the things that we anyway want to do uh, so we've been supportive in terms of our students our researchers our uh, admin and our infrastructure so we also have our uh, faculty members writing proposals and so some of the projects done by iitfc are actually uh, implemented in our institute so we would like to see it uh, as a global company and when i say global company it's a research aggregator you know the way we have structured ourselves when we talk about dtp or mcc or ready program these are some of the initiatives uh, you know when we are talking about students uh, who have uh, an intention to work in the domain of research and development they need to be supported they have still not made up their mind as to you know if they are going to start a job they are going to start a startup they are going to work a little bit more in terms of you know whatever they are passionate about we want to give them a platform and that is what ready is all about then we are creating two specialized centers which we call medical robotic center it will be done in collaboration with triple it delhi the second one is the drone technology park and the reason we have selected sony perth is that it is away from this red zone so it's an easy place to test it's a easy place to you know bring everyone together so we want to create an ecosystem for testing manufacturing you know research and development startups incubation uh, training all these put together in that space the first thing is the goal of success would be creating an impact in society through some value add in terms of uh, technologies and ideas uh, i would definitely want ihsc to make an impact you know an impact wherein we see our ecosystem coming together to see that we as an entity we as a country we as an ecosystem are able to build products on our own and that is what uh, you know we want to do as a part of icsc okay wonderful thank you so much uh, that was a little bit of a brief introduction about ihfc and what we do i will now start with uh, uh, satako uh, ma'am's uh, introduction because she's going to be the first speaker today and her talk title is very interesting living with robots a new era of human robot coexistence and it's very fascinating because it was apparently his brain, uh, her brain child uh, for this uh, to have this robot officiating their wedding and uh, i think it is a, a very very unique concept and i think i when i look at it i felt very tickled because uh, it is the first time we was someone uh, we were seeing something like this in india and uh, you know we know japan being as a very progressive country and robots being a very daily part of the lives so but we are looking at this kind of an interaction in terms of officiating a wedding for the first time so it was very interesting and of course having said that uh, we are uh, you know also looking at ma'am having a lot of experience in uh, particularly this area and she says that uh, japan has been the uh, hub of things like astro boy and doremon and you know and robots are 
basically what she is trying to say is that it's a subsequently uh, it's a friendly entity and familiar entity and they are going to have a lot of impact a positive impact in our lives and uh, satyakum ma'am's um, uh, work experience as a sales manager and has has a unique uh, you know wide variety of international relations under her uh, ha- under feathers on her cap and uh, she is very clear that uh, uh, she has demonstrated a harmonious existence with robots and i fairy is what uh, was used as her wedding witness and mc and of course this event was something that really changed the mind shift and the uh, perception and paradigm shift of the usage of robots in our lives and not just as machines as someone being a friend to us so uh, ma'am i would like to now hand over the whole platform to you for uh, you to tell us what was this experience and how you're going to bring about uh, how, how we can look forward to robots being a positive change in our lives so over to you ma'am Thank you so much for the introduction. I I think you almost to tell everything what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but thank you for the opportunity. Hi everyone. My name is Satoko and I'm a wife of Tom. So I'm I'm going to share my slide from now. So everybody can see the slide yes yes all right yes okay thank you again thank you for this opportunity today my name is satoko i am very excited to share with you all the story of how the idea of this crazy robot wedding was born please relax and i hope you enjoy my presentation first let me introduce myself I am a voiceover artist and audio visual translator now. I have a home studio, well, it's a closet where where I record my voice. If any of you start a business in the future and want to launch your product or service in Japanese market, I can help with the promotion by using my voice. <laughs> so please keep in touch. Please yes. do not rely on AI Japanese voice yet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, being a voiceover artist and robots have nothing in common, but don't worry, I will talk about robots from now on. Here is today's agenda. Before the presentation, there is one thing I want to tell you. When I worked in the robotics industry, there were very few women in the field moreover i am neither an engineer nor a technician from the early 2000s to 2010 when humanoid robots were at their peak in japan i believe it is very valuable to talk about how robots were perceived in society from the perspective of a non engineer and a woman I hope my story can inspire you in some way. Now, let me talk about my work experience. I work as a PR at a National Science Museum. This museum is called Miraikan and is located in the heart of Tokyo. Inside the beautiful glass building, visitors can experience the cutting-edge science and technology exhibits. The symbol of Miraikan is a giant globe called Geocosmos which has an LED LED lit surface. If you ever have the chance to visit Tokyo, I highly recommend you to visit Miraikan. In the early 2000, humanoid robots like Honda's Ashimo and Sony's Curio were very popular. Additionally, Sony's pet robot Aibo had many users all over Japan. Miraikan officially hired Ashimo as a staff member, and the ceremony was widely reported by the media in Japan. Ashimo performed several demonstrations a day at Miraikan and was the most popular attraction there. Every time a demo was held, many visitors would gather and cheered for Ashimo. 
not only the visitors, but also all the staff at Miraikan saw Ashimo as a co worker. Unfortunately, after working at Miraikan for 20 years, Ashimo had to retire. And the retirement money? Zero. But Asimo received countless thank you letters from its fans. Many media companies covered Asimo's retirement ceremony. It was an event that showed just how strong the bond between humans and humanoid robots and become, had become. My next workplace was a company called Kokoro, a, a subsidiary of Sanrio famous for Hello Kitty. Kokoro is a company that manufactures robots. I was in charge of international sales. Kokoro is a world-class company in making large dinosaur animatronics like T-Rex. And these dinosaur robots are sold to a museum in Japan and abroad. This T-Rex is at the Natural History Museum in London, England. So this is the T-Rex animatronics robot. It's huge and it's scary. Kids tend to cry when they see this kind of robot. Using the robot mechanisms and silicon scheme material technology developed for dinosaur robots, Kokoro created Actroid a robot that looks just like a human. This human-like robot quickly attracted a lot of public attention. There were both positive and negative reviews. Let's take a look. とりあえずこちらには何にも見えません。なんかなんかしてる？そう Satoko, are you showing something? Yeah, um, I'm showing video, but you don't see that. No. Ah, okay, okay, let's forget it. All right, next, um. The HRP4C was developed in collaboration with the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, aka AIST. You younger folks might not find it strange, but when it was first introduced, it left a provocative impression on people. At this point, I could say that Japan was quite ahead of its time. In Japan, there are many animations with robots as the main characters, and since Japanese people watch them from a young age, it can be said that they have a good impression of robots. On the other hand, in the main countries I visited for sales, such as the United States and European countries, the evaluation of Actroid was very negative. Many people found human-like robots creepy. Even if they were not particularly religious, the underlying belief that humans were created by God might be one of the reasons for this reaction. Oh, I cannot see the other picture. Um, the, the other picture was supposed to be the industrial robots image, sorry. While selling robots, there was something that bothered me. Robots were divided into industrial robots that work in factories or entertainment robots displayed in museums and events. I wished that people could feel more familiar with robots in their daily lives. I believed that we needed robots that could spend time with people not just serve them or entertain them. So I came up with the idea of having Kokoro's robot 
named I Fairy as a witness at our wedding. And I decided to do something crazy, announce it to the global media as the world's first robot wedding. By the way, I met my husband, Tom, when I was working at Kokoro. I went to his lab to sell him Kokoro's robots, but it seemed he was more interested in me than in Actroid. That's how we met and we're happy for now. The robot wedding was a great success. Many media companies came to cover the event. It was widely reported all over the world and Tom received many surprised messages from his fellow robot researchers along with new articles about the wedding from their countries. It was even featured in an Indian newspaper. 14 years have passed since our robot wedding, and now with the evolution of AI, there is a boom in the development of humanoid robots worldwide. As you may know, even Tesla is developing a robot that takes the shape of a human. It is still very difficult and time consuming for robots to perform delicate tasks like humans. There are many tasks that humans can do faster. So why do robot develop developers insist on giving robots a human shape? It's because we're entering an era where humans and robots coexist and work together. As a woman involved in the robot business, I am pleased to see that over the past decade, people's attitude and perceptions towards humanoid robots have gradually become more positive. Here's conclusion. By coexisting with people and assisting them, robots can reduce humans' burdens and allow people to focus on more human activities. Tom will share more about this later. As robots work in homes, workplaces, public facilities, and schools, they will collect data from users and the environment, improving their functions even more. The important thing is that more women should use robots. Unfortunately, in many countries, including Japan, women still handle most household work. So including women's perspectives and feedback will make robots easier to use. It is also important for male robot designers and engineers to listen to the opinions of women, such as your sisters, mothers, grandmothers, relatives, female friends, wives, girlfriends, and co-workers during the development process. You might hear unexpected ideas and eye-opening hints from them. Like our crazy robot wedding idea, 14 years ago, Tom just listened to me and say, okay, let's do it. Then this happened. Thank you for listening to our story today. I hope it provided some helpful hints for young audience. I wish for science and technology to continue being developed and used for the happiness of humanity. I am very excited to see what technologies you will develop and what innovations you will create in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. I will now invite, uh, sir, sir, are you ready with, uh, Tom, sir, are you ready with your presentation? Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I will give you, uh, actually, I'll give a brief introduction of Tom, sir. Um, uh, it's yeah, very fascinating you, to actually read much. about you. I read about you and I realized that your passion for, uh, you know, robots and rehabilitation and medical actually comes from your own caregiving, from your own personal experience. And I guess that is the best kind of experience, which makes you want to think and really work passionately towards a project. And that's exactly what you've done in human care robots and uh, that's the story i would love you to share with us as to what uh you know makes you uh makes you a pioneer and makes your vision of giving the best robotic human care 
in uh, in the world and i i would like you to talk about that so it's wonderful having you with us sir so if you could just uh, uh, get, let us know as uh, you are a phd from the university of tokyo in japan and you are a continuous student i think so you're a journal student yourself with the robotics study and the society so it's wonderful that we are honored to have such a person of your cater to join us today so uh, handing over the stage to you sir to take over the entire talk Okay, thank you very much. Yes, can you see my slide? Yes, I can see your slide. Okay, it's it's in the slide correct slide slide mode, right? Yes, it's on. This visible, yeah, yeah. So we can. Okay, okay, Your great. slide is right here. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So I think you know. So today's topic is quite. I uh, think very much for kind of interaction, and uh, uh, today's topic is uh, you know first topic is about waiting, and which is really interesting and stimulating. So probably you will, you want to have some you know so discussion or uh, question and answer time. So I'll try to minimize my uh, presentation because because it was supposed to finish it you know so by uh, ten thirty. So so we don't have 30 minutes, so uh, I'll quickly go through my slides. The title is Technology Assisted Care in Japan. And just I would like to, uh, you know, so remind you that uh, so my experience in, in India, you know, it's it's uh, quite a long journey. And the first, you know, so uh, I get the JST strategic cooperative program with Prof Data on assistive robotics. And uh, so we and, you know, frequently went to Japan as so I and my students, you know, visited uh, India and so they also came to Japan. And at the time, I and Satoko, I, uh, you know, so lived in Nara, the ancient city in Japan. So, and uh, yeah, so faculty members uh, visited us and my you know daughter is still very young. And I also visited India and, uh, you know, holy period, it was holy. Period and I, I and my student that's got got red like this a lot and uh, uh, female students uh, you know quite laughed a lot by throwing you know so the, the color to, to us anyway so the the one of the uh, good you know so nice outcome so between men uh, with our collaboration is this you know we are good at measuring the surface EMZ signals and predict out the motion in this case you know. Uh, uh, we are uh, estimating, you know, the motion by by just using the EMZ signal surface EMZ signals, and uh, so that estimated motion is sent out to control this uh, uh, 3D printed robot. You know, nowadays you are using 3D printers a lot, but uh, so this is you know so published in many years ago, and you know more than 10 years ago, and uh, so it was really a nice good start, and. At the time, my you know so quite genius, uh, brilliant student was uh, the came came from the Philippines, uh, who is Ngeo Jimson, and Jimson got PhD under my supervision, and now uh, he has been working in in Meta New York, and he he's still working in this field, and after that I got a brilliant student from uh, IIT, and uh, so he is uh, WBD Sanjay. And he got a PhD under my supervision and regarding surface the, the analysis of surface EMZ signals. And now, you know, so he after getting the PhD, he has been working in Hitachi. And so other my I have lots of academic activities in in IIT, but uh, just today I'm honored to be here because of Saha Sensei. So uh, and uh, you know, so I so we met in around 2010 i think at uh, in in tokyo and also iit delhi and uh, i'm still i'm very young on these pictures and uh, uh, because at the time i was a uh, uh, international relation executive board in, in robotics society of japan and uh, our uh, we robotics society of japan would like to have robotics society of india in india and and we asked saha sensei and ashishi and other faculty members to do to, to found Robotics Society of India, and in a year they successfully uh, founded uh, Robotics Society of India, and we have been, you know, so collaborating since then for many years. And uh, next year we are going to have AIR, advanced advances in robotics, 
uh, it's an international conference. Every two years, they have you have an international conference. Uh, the 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 name of the society name uh, has changed it to the Robotics Society. So the its abbreviation is TRS. Anyway, so you next year you're going to have uh, AIR 2025 in IIT Jodhpur, where I also visited. You know when uh, it was founded, and uh, so I hope to. Uh, join again. So I'm, I'm the uh, international liaison chair of AIR 2025. So I hope to uh, visit India again after Corona. So I'm from. Uh, this is the shape of Japan, and we are uh, now in Kitakyushu city uh, in in this Fukuoka prefecture, and uh, Kyoto is also here. And uh, do you know Yasukawa Electronics? And Yasukawa uh, India is there also. Yes. Co is a global company and shipping a lot of industrial robots, and uh, uh, it's Yaskawa has a very important uh, branch in in India also. I hope many of you know Yasukawa, and uh, Yasukawa headquarter is in Kitakyushu city. That's why Qtech and Yaskawa has been collaborating. And uh, so my background is intelligent robotics, and and ha had nothing to do with uh, um, medical care. But or or medical and also care, and why I have started working uh, in that direction is uh, very you know so personal reason due to the personal reason. So my mother got Parkinson's disease when I uh, became a, a researcher, academic researcher, and after that, so uh, you know so because we are engineer, so we can easily imagine you know so how to help them. Right, so that's why I, I started collaborating with uh, Pakistan disease persons, communities, and also medical doctors, uh, and also nurses, and, and their families. So, this slide shows my, uh, you know, so uh, important studies uh, regarding, uh, inspired by my mother. So due to the time limitation, I just show, show you something. So uh, when uh, we get Connect, then I it applied Connect to. Uh, you know, so develop this kind of a home in-home rehabilitation system, and uh, when we got uh, you know so uh, you know this, this kind of dual arm robots, and actually this is my mother, and uh, you know so she's still okay you know, after 30 years you know, since uh, she got P uh, Parkinson's disease, and now you see you know so she's incl inclining you know so ahead and also the laterally. But this robot can automatically wear, you know, the dress dress her like this. And uh, Pakistan disease persons have, uh, you know, so usually they tend to have a significant freezing of gait, and to mediate the freeze, suppress the uh, occurrence of a freezing of gait, we developed a very simple minded uh, wearable walking gait assist device, and it, you know, so now we are uh, collecting a lot of data. You know, so uh, we believe uh, it works very well. So, for example, in in these slides, uh, sorry, movies, videos, uh, for the for the upper panel, so we didn't activate our uh, device, and she got a lot of uh, freezing gait. And uh, in in the bottom panel, you can see, you know, she's keeping keeping walking. Yeah. So uh, we got, of course, you know, some statistically you know, good uh, results already, but uh, we need a lot of more number of samples um, from more uh, number of uh, patients. And we have also developed this kind of, you know, AI robotize uh, walker, rollator. Yeah. And uh, we can measure, you know, so her walking during this, and also we can measure foot force distribution like this. So we can an analyze, you know, so some walking parameters and see, you know, what kind of effect, good effect, uh, you know, can be applied to her by this kind of AI robotized robot. And finally, so this part, uh, uh, sorry, so maybe it's uh, a little bit difficult for you to see my uh, cursor. Yeah, finally, this part is just showing, you know, nothing about ICT. Not uh, not not the robotics technology, but uh, you know, uh, by using this kind of smart device, uh, we can predict out the changes uh, in the mood or changes in the condition of the PD patients. So that would be also very very helpful uh, for the patients. And how to 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 change the behavior in the future? For example, so if you know you're going to have 
freezing gate or some significant side effect in one hour, then then you want to you might want to change your your plan to go out, or you might want to take medicines right now or something like that. Such a behavioral modification can be derived by this kind of technology. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. So I have to mention that I need to mention. So, uh, so we have been working for this uh, dressing assistance robot. So we were the first uh, research research group to initiate this study, and uh, uh, you know, so he is also IATM and uh, Kogan Nishant, Dr. Kogan Nishant. So, so he got PhD under my supervision, and uh, so he was really brilliant student. And uh, first he uh, went to Tokyo University, but after after that he, he went back to India, and now he is working in this company, and. Uh, this uh, Dr. Joshi Ravi, so Ravi, you know, so was a, a project uh, uh, staff uh, of uh, Saha Sensei, uh, Professor Saha in IIT Delhi, and he joined my laboratory since, uh, uh, you know, so uh, first master's course, and after that he got he got PhD by, you know, uh, developing uh, this the the nice framework, learning dressing framework for this robot. And after that, uh, he's still in Japan, and he has been working for uh, some venture companies. Uh, first, Tech Magic, and and followed by Finger Vision now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm just. To, I was just talking about my personal, you know, so uh, reasons why I initiated my, uh, you know, so medical care research uh, due to my mother, but uh, it's uh, quite a nation nationwide problem and also worldwide problem. This slide shows the transition of aging rates in the world, and this is Japan, you know, so it runs, you know, so always it has been the top. But, uh, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, this is the latest one, sorry, you know, the top in Asia. But uh, uh, you see, you know, so compared to this graph, you know, other countries, you know, Singapore, Thailand, and China, of course, so their um, aging rates uh, well, you know, so be very, very closer to Japan. So in the in the near future, 2040 to 2060, and other European countries are also you know, they, their transition rates are getting higher and higher. But in India, you know, so this is this slide shows the population pyramid of Japan, and also you know, so the the decrease in our population it's miserable. But in your country, it's great, of course. Still beautiful. You have beautiful population pyramid, and your population will not, you know, uh, be decreased quickly. So uh, that's great. And nevertheless, you have uh, a lot of elderly people already. So uh, I think the number is similar to Jap Japanese population. So of course, you uh, must be very interested in some medical and also care. And I just want to mention that uh, the system, uh, you know, so care. You know, medical and care system in Japan is very unique and different from any other countries. So, uh, in Japan, medical and also care are, uh, you know, are different, and they have different budgets. So, uh, in 2000, you know, so uh, Japanese government established long-term care insurance system, and uh, unfortunately, so due to the the shortage in uh, our population, and also uh, in particular in younger younger population, so uh, supply and demand estimation of care workers toward 2040 is uh, you know so very bad actually. So uh, they are predicting that uh, the, the the number of pop at the population of uh, you know who are working for care caregiving uh, will not change. But uh, so actually, demand is getting higher and higher. And in 2014, you know, 700,000 caregivers will lack. So a big problem. That's why, of course, we need to, uh, you know, so introduce so information communication technologies, IoT devices, and also robotics and AI, of course. So 10 years back, uh, Ministry of Edu uh, Sorry, Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Trade, they got together and uh, proposed open the new field. And uh, they, you know, it's, uh, I mean, they define these, you know, so uh, critical domains for caregiving. And they uh, started uh, giving, giving the founding, uh, the grants to the, you know, selected 
selected enterprises or small uh, business companies to develop these robots. And actually, you know, so, so many hundreds of robots uh, have been already you know, invented. But the problem is how to, you know, so introduce those robots into the real nursing care fields. That's, that's headwake. And these are just an example. You see some, some so the, due to the time limitation, I can't explain them very in detail. But you see, so, you know, just these are three of hundreds robots that uh, the Japanese company developed. And the difficulties in introducing robots are, uh, you know, so because of uh, balancing cost benefits and risks are very difficult. And also utility is often unclear in the short term. So we really want them, you know, caregivers to use the robots for a long time, but they, you know, so they don't like it. And uh, if the, uh, you know, so uh, the short term is not clear to the caregivers, then they just stop using them. So that's a big, big trouble. Uh, it's, it's like a, your you know, master training or rehabilitation also. They face the same problem. Yeah, and each person's needs is quite different, so uh, the, the devices should be quite adaptive to each individual, and uh, that's why the, the cost of each robot usually gets really higher if, if, we, if the robot is really adaptive. Yeah, and uh, in Japanese care field, they really want to, you know, so use their hands for their care. So that uh, such a such a culture, we need to break such a culture. So that's also difficult, uh, you know. So it takes time. It took time, but we have been working for ten years. So nowadays, the robots are slowly introduced nicely in Japanese caregiving societies. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, like this. So this show, slide shows the trend of the introduction rate of nursing care robots comparison between you know so financial year 2020 and 22. So for you know monitoring devices are you know rapidly introduced and widely introduced into the robot you know, nursing care field. It's uh, the introduction rate is 30 percent now, but uh, so others are not so good compared to the monitoring system. But uh, so we are going for, I can say we are going for. And this slide show, you know, some some transfer assist robot in real elderly care houses. I try to visit a lot of as much as possible uh, elderly care houses to see what they're doing and uh, uh, they are really using nicely or not. You know, so to get some hints to introduce the robots, I try to uh, visit a lot of care houses as, as much as possible. And this, you know, shows. You know how they are using the wearable transfer assist robot in elderly care houses. Okay, and this is a non wearable type dual arm transfer assist robot in elderly care houses. So, amazingly, I found that uh, they, you know, so those caregivers actually use can use the robot quite efficiently and quickly. So, they, so in general, caregivers don't like to take a lot of time by using robots compared to, you know, so the case that where they use their hand, right? But uh, so in in these cases, they're using quite efficiently and quickly the robots. So it's really good for their uh, health, you know, caregivers' health regarding them. Uh, they don't get a lot of burden on their back. You know, they don't have uh, a back pain by using these robots, and also. Uh, caretakers can feel good by you know so using these robots because you know so the the physical transfer action sometimes uh, gave a, give a very bad you know or some actions or feeling to the caregivers uh, sorry caretakers okay so anyway I got another you know so a PhD student. Uh, he, he he already got a PhD under my supervision. He, the name is Vinay Kumar, and he was also uh, you know IIT uh, affiliated to IIT uh, Delhi uh, Mechanical Engineering, and he you know so joined my laboratory as a PhD student, uh, and he got the PhD, and now he is working in Japanese uh, quite famous Japanese uh, venture company Tech Magic, and he his work is about uh, biomechanic biomechanical analysis. Uh, of uh, this kind of sit to stand motion. 
Okay, so I think it's almost time. I need to be really quick, but uh, you know, so these are also you know very cute and helpful robots. You know, it, they are uh, animal therapy robots. You know, you you can understand animal therapy robots or uh, animal therapy robots have uh, lots of benefits uh, compared to the real animals, right? So no allergy and they don't need to eat, you know, they they don't, you know, uh, yeah, so those, those like that. So quite big differences, big benefits compared to the real robots. So they are being used in the hospitals and nursing care houses and, uh, you know, good evidences, you know, so of by of using these robots are being accumulated like right now. Okay, so due to time limitation, just stop. So in a, in our laboratory, we can you know so investigate the uh, uh, performance of uh, those robots also, and we are trying to assist uh, companies to introduce the robots into the real nursing care facilities. And this is almost the final slide. And I also initiated the students' activity, students' circle, called Rapid Creation Section. That's a student circle to, to promote welfare. You know, digital well, welfare tran digital kind of welfare DX digital transform, and they're using 3D printers to you know so develop individually adaptive you know uh, some uh, tools, and also uh, according to the request by the, the actual uh, people uh, with disability, they develop a new device, and uh, they gave you know provided that device. And so, so they have a good communi communication with the, uh, you know, so the, the community of the people having disabilities. And yeah, so in this case, this uh, picture shows uh, the, the good outcomes of our patient researcher, right? So uh, if we can, you know, develop more patient researchers and they know the needs and they know, you know, their diseases. So if they can, you know, so design what they want to have, that's great. So we are, my students are assisting, you know, so the patient researchers or, right? Okay. So that's the end in summary. So in Japan, you know, uh, medical and long-term care are different system and, uh, you know, kaigo. In Japanese, we say care, you know, we call care, kaigo, long-term long -term care system is uh, based on uh, the long-term care insurance system and i now we are thinking you know to export our our you know so our products you know uh, care robots to the world and uh, for to do that it's quite important to because the, our culture is different in, in india and in japan and in all over the world that's why we uh, really uh, specify what our culture is on Kaigo. And uh, so with this kind of concept and culture Kaigo, so we really want to uh, so export our robots to help the world. You know, so there are many, many countries having the similar uh, problems in the uh, uh, elder society in the world. India is still very young. Yeah. And the introduction of technology in all occupational fields is essential in Japan because working age population is rapidly declining. And uh, yeah, and uh, so we have been working with uh, METI and you know Ministry of Health, and uh, also we take participatory design approaches, you know, so, so including uh, patient researchers. And uh, progress in the robot introduction is not not very fast, but steady, steadily being made in recent years. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I and Satoko and and I, uh, pleased to get uh, questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, one, one. Ah, Saha Sensei, thank you. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Dr. Saha. Sir, you are muted. 
Ah, konnichiwa. Sorry, I joined late. So please, please start the question and answer. If you have any question, please raise your hand so we can uh, identify you and ask a question. Oh, okay. Maybe I ask a question. So, I mean, it's a general question, not a technical question. When the robot has officiated your marriage, how was the feeling to both of you, Satoko san and no, Shivata san? Say, <laughs> can you share your feelings? I mean, did you feel good or did you feel you know, very special because you are in the news of New York Times and <laughs> Times of India, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Satoko, please. Okay, on the on the wedding day, um. Honestly, I really enjoyed our wedding and uh, I didn't get nervous at all. And I was kind of excited to show off our communication robot to the world. But on the other hand, what I worried about was, um, you know, sometimes robot freeze, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I really prayed, oh, please do not freeze during our <laughs> ceremony. But, um, yes. you know, it went pretty yes. well. Thank you. Thank you. You can say how was the your baby? Yeah, yeah, so I so as as Satoko said, I just followed her plan, you know, so <laughs> very, very nice plan, uh, interesting plan. But uh so we got, you know, as she told, so we get interviews. We get interviews from, you know, AP AFP Reuter and uh, so I was quite impressed by her answer. So, so one of her answers is, why don't we use robots, right? Mm. So there are there are robots at the time already many robots are there in Japan. So why don't we, you know, you use a lot more in our life, you know? So uh, that's really nice, you know. So still in Japan. So I I really want to know your the situation in India, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, so in Japan, if you visit universities, right? For example, Tsukuba also, mm. if no robots are running actually okay <laughs> right so uh even even in our universe academic fields robots are not working you know so robot means you know of course uh, there are some industrial robots you know and we use it you know for mm. our research but mm. but otherwise you know uh different from iot devices like alexa right mm -hmm. Ro we are not using robots in you know usual life mm -hmm. right in general so that's you know, so 14 years have passed, but still uh, the yes, situation so. has, hasn't yes, changed so. very well. So we should use the robots a lot more. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Saka-sensei, how, how is it? So in, in, in IIT, IHFC or IIT Delhi? Okay. So, so uh, all, always, uh, always robots are running, working? Uh, I wish. Uh, uh, I wish it is running, but please visit us. Uh, bring that robot to us. Uh, we'll have some marriage here also in India. Okay, <laughs> and so we, here is very similar. Uh, but we want Japan to take risk first with the robots, and once you're successful, then we'll borrow the robot from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pia, go ahead. Yes. Uh, no, I would like to actually take this opportunity, sir, to ask you to. Uh, please present the Springer voucher to our uh, honorable speakers to thank them for their wonderful. Uh... Oh, one but person has raised their hand. I think somebody has a question. Yeah, please go ahead with the question. Yeah, please, please ask the question. Ramni? Hello. Yeah. Please, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm audible. Yes. 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 Yeah, uh, hi, sir. It was a very nice presentation given by you. So my question is like, uh, how, what do you like uh, see uh, brain computer interface technology alongside with the adv uh, advancement of uh, robotics and application in medical field? Especially, can you like share your insights on uh, current trends and uh, challenges or uh, potential future developments in this field? Yeah, 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 so so yeah, good question, good and always difficult question. Thank you very much. 
And I'm also uh, a part of me is computational neuroscientist, and I worked for uh, in brain brain mass interface in the in the past. So uh, yeah, so as you see, scientific fictions will you know get real, right? So we have iPhone tablet, you know. So it was you know just uh, describing the scientific fiction in the past, but it's real now. They are real now. So. Uh, you know Japanese manga, and probably you know so Japanese manga and Ghost in the Shell, the Hollywood movie also. So such such a world will would come, but uh, the you know so because it requires a social accept acceptance also, it would take time a lot. Anyway, so technical challenges are, if you were talking about uh, e, uh, you know uh, BMI, you know so. Not BCI, and BCI is there already, but but uh, you know so uh, measuring so uh, brain information over the uh, scalp uh, is really difficult. I mean I mean technically so just measuring the signals are quite easy, quite easy, but they are hot, quite noisy and difficult to interpret, acquire the cognitive information, you know by just using BCI. And uh, for, for example. Uh, you, it's it's almost impossible to find good cognitive information uh, in the gamma band in, in the signal, but uh, uh, if we can you know so insert the electrodes so under the scalp uh, on the on the cortical surface, like uh, nowadays I think test, uh, Elon Musk's company so uh, so they are also trying to do that. And then uh, we can read uh, some uh, good, beautiful signals. Yes, but other technical challenges are because uh, we are biological uh, living things, and the many you know so proteins actually gather uh, you know some codes, the uh, electrode, so it degrades the the uh, you know so efficacy see, of. Uh, you know, extracting the signals by by using the such a compounded you know so uh, contaminated uh, electrodes that's a that's a big problem so uh, even if you just embed perfectly under the such a signals under the cortical cortices but still you know so such a degra degradation will can happen so uh, you know so it takes time it will take time so now you know, so in in these years, I don't think it will become uh, quite uh, you know so uh, general in in our world, in our lives, right? And uh, in, instead of that, I'm inter also interested in that direction. But uh, instead of that, nowadays there are many other hackings. You know, uh, our, our researchers are there. For example, uh, if, if if you know uh, Parkinson's disease very well. You know, then there is a surgery called uh, deep brain stimulation. Okay, so uh, if if you get too much, you know, so uh, uncomfortability in controlling your body in Parkinson's disease patients, then they sometimes accept the the you know deep brain stimulation by embedding by being embedded electrodes in their uh, you know so uh, brain, right? And it's already there. The te technology is already there, right? But of course, again, the same, you know, so, so some uh, degradation will happen and then sometimes need to uh, get surgery again and again. That will also happen. But anyway, by doing that, there are other technologies can be found and will, such new technology will be tested from now on a lot by, uh, you know, as a, as a researchers a lot from now on. It's a very simple one. Okay, on top of the fingers, they uh, added, you know, very slight, you know, vibrations on, on, on each finger and for many, many months. Then, interestingly, it changes the brain activity, you know, so without using the direct embedding of the electrodes, such, you know, so, uh, you know, st stimulation, vibration, so in their, you know, so, uh, end effect, actually. You know, and effect probably uh, foot also foot foot stimulation would also work. You know, in such a way, uh, they are trying to change the cortical. You know, so quite 
uh, wrong activity in the cortical uh, cortices. So in such a way, we would find and uh, make it, you know, so uh, quite general, you know, in our lives. That would be one way. And maybe, you know, so 50 years later, uh, 100 years later, we would use, you know, so generally uh, some embedded brain, uh, you know, so electrodes in our brains. We are not sure so far, but uh, I believe that SF, scientific, scientific desc description in scientific writings, will, you know, fictions, will become true. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, uh, so there are two uh, guys. I, I, I do have a question. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, sir. I am Vishal from uh, NIT Jamshedpur. My mm -hmm. question is that, is there any scope of recording dreams by the use of AR, VR, and robotics, and how this will help in patients who lost their memory uh, by accident? Mm hmm. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, so I don't have, uh, yeah, that's quite important, critical and uh, interesting question. Yeah, so we still don't know, so how memories are actually, you know, so described in a brain, right? So uh, the research is going on. And uh, so, you know, of course we, we know, we now know, you know, so the memory is not embedded in, in hippocampus only and the memory is distributed distributed all over uh, the cortices. And we don't know how to you know, connect the other external devices to the brain yet. But uh, so, yeah, so research is going on. Yeah, in the future, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have, a, I think uh, Akash Sondhi has a question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Okay, just Akash, uh, just one second. Uh, before you proceed, I think uh, Professor Saha needs to actually go. Has sure. he already left? Uh, but I would like Professor Saha to actually present the spring of origin and we continue with the question and answers. Sure. Sorry, so I Neha, need to go at another the... meeting. So, yeah, please. Show the yeah, Neha, voucher. could you put up the, could, could you please put up the voucher? Yeah. So, thank you, uh, Satoko san and Shivata san, Shivata san say <laughs> for the nice lecture, which I was giving for uh, long years. And uh, um, so this is a, a small voucher, 150 euro uh, books you can order. Uh, this is sponsored by Springer, and this is a small token of appreciation from Cobotox. So please accept it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So much, thank you. And now we will continue with uh, the question and answers, and we have a question from Akash Sondi. Akash, please. Yes, please thank you. Bye. Please allow me to leave, Sensei. Yes, yes. Bye. Uh, See you again. Okay, thank you so much. Have a nice day. Good night. Okay, and uh, Akash Sondi, please uh, ask your question. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Tom, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, it was after a. Uh, it was in fact, you know, we. Uh, work at IHFC and uh, I'm part of Professor Saha's team and many other innovators who are working in different robotic systems. But uh, today was a very convincing presentation when you presented how toys can be used, how robotic toys can be safe uh, for patients, you know, without the worry of infection. So mm -hmm. it, it was a very good revelation for me and as an individual to understand why robotics can be a good fit. Mm -hmm. uh, my question relates to, again, safety in another sense. So when you presented the robotic systems, which was about caretaker and caregivers, how do you ensure safety? You know, while you were trying to emphasize on the point of comfort uh, for caretaker and caregiver, uh, do we also, you know, I, I, I believe we should be taking care of safety. So can you just highlight that aspect for us for our better understanding? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, regarding the safety, so there is already a regulation, ISO, ISO 13481, I think. And uh, so uh, Japanese companies, you know, so makers, they have to be responsible, you know, uh, for, for their products, robots. And they just need to follow the guidance of ISO, that ISO. And after that, of course, you know, the makers, the companies, 
you know, so they need to, you know, it, it's very bad for them to just, just you know, so sell it, right? So just selling it doesn't uh, mean, you know, so a good introduction of the robots into the nursing care fields. So uh, that's why, uh, for example, yeah, so now, you know, so this is still a, a test, testing era so in, in Japan also. For example, Kitakishu City, so my, our city, has its own care robot master's course, right? And uh, so, so care, care givers can uh, learn how to use it safely and eff effectively. And uh, after uh, getting some courses, so Kitakishu City, you know, so issues the cert certificate. So in such a way, there are many ways, you know, to, uh, you know, get used to the each robot to use uh, safely, to use it safely and also effectively. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. There's no single answer, but one uh, one simple answer is the pro makers should follow the, the ISO in, you know, sta international standard, and and also uh, on top of that, uh, they need to, you know, so caregivers. Uh, needs to be get familiar uh, with using it for you know so but but they say for example so today I showed you examples some transfer assistive robots uh, in the real elderly care houses and they say they just need needed you know uh, one month for one month to study uh, you know to to get familiar with it to use it efficiently and safely just this one month yeah so some training training period is required. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. thank you very much again. That yeah. answer carry uh, gave me another insight about safety. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank My you. Pleasure. And congratulations we to have 14 any more years. <laughs> thank you. Of your yeah, reason. congratulations. Congratulations indeed. Yes. Thank and you. do we have any more questions? Okay. I think we do not have any more questions. So thank you so much. That was a very, very insightful, uh, enlightening, and very interesting topic. After a long time, I think uh, me being like, ma'am, I'm not from a technical background. I'm a, I'm a completely marketing person, and in fact, PR person like ma'am. So uh, this was a fascinating topic for me, and it was fascinating to listen. I'm very also... Uh, you know, close to my heart is medical rehabilitation and caregiver topic in medical. So I think both the topics touched my heart. So thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, ma'am, for the wonderful topic and a wonderful conversation and enlightening all of us. And I look forward to seeing more of you in the future. Thank, thank you, you much. so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. And I shall see you again. A very good night thank from you. India. Yeah, thank you very much. And have a, still have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.